Bionico Adventures 3, The Darkness Below. Written by Greg Farshti. Recording by Tatiana Stapleton. Introduction. Jala paused from his labors for a moment and took a deep breath. He could not remember ever working harder than he had in the past few days. Ever since it had been announced that the Matoran were going to move from the island of Matanui to the island city of Metranui, villagers had been toiling day and night to build enough boats for the great journey. For Jala and his friends, the non-stop work was welcome. Their home, Tokoro, had been destroyed in the battle to save the island from darkness, and they were living in other villages until the time came to leave Matanui forever. Talk around the fires at night was about Metranui what wonders they might find there, and how soon they would be able to leave for this new and mysterious place. We'll never get to Metro Nui if the great Jala keeps taking rest breaks. Jala turned to see his friend Holly smiling at him. The Gama Torin had recently been named the new Chronicler, and ever since, she had been traveling from place to place, gathering tales about Metro Nui. She hoped to be able to share the stories with the other Matoran during the long journey to come. At least when I'm working, I'm working, replied Jella good-naturedly. You can't build a boat with a story, you know. Maybe not, but it sure makes the sailing go faster. I'm heading to see Taraga Vakama. He's about to continue his tale of Metra Nui to the Toa. I am supposed to record it for the wall of history we will build on the new island. Come with me? Jella thought about it. He probably should keep working. But he was already far ahead of all the others. It wouldn't do any harm to take a little time off. Okay, let's go, he said. The two of them set out for the Maya Circle Sandpit, the place where Turaga Vakama traditionally told his tales. After a short while, Jala asked, So is it true? Is what true? All the stories I've been hearing. How the Turaga were once Toa and Metra Nui. How they searched for six missing Matoran, but learned that one of the Matoran planned to betray the city, and how they gathered six great discs and used them to defeat a menace called the Morbuzak. Holly nodded. Yes, it's all true. Amazing, isn't it? One moment, they were Matoran just like us, living and working in a great city. The next moment, they were Toa Metru with powers and Toa tools and everything. Up ahead. They could see the seven Toa gathered around Turaga Vakama. The Turaga had already begun to speak. It had been a difficult and dangerous mission, but we six Toa Metru had triumphed. Metra Nui had been saved from the Morbuzek, and we were certain that we would be hailed as heroes. But we were about to face another test, one that would threaten to shatter our newfound unity. The Traga fire turned his gaze to the night sky, but all present knew that his eyes were truly viewing images from the past. Toa would challenge Toa in the darkness below the city, in a struggle that still lives in my nightmares. End of Introduction <laughs>